December 29, 1972, Eastern Airlines Flight 401 from JFK Airport to Miami began boarding at around 8.30 p.m. It was a Lockheed L-1011 TriStar, a large and advanced plane with two levels and eight seats per row. The pilot, Captain Bob Loft, was experienced and known for his confidence. First Officer Bert Stockstill joined him in the cockpit. Unlike most planes, the L-1011 had four seats in the cockpit due to its size. Don Repo, the flight engineer, and Angelo Donadeo, an Eastern Airlines employee, joined the cockpit crew as Flight 401 approached Miami International Airport. Captain Bob Loft initiated takeoff at 9.20 p.m., and the flight proceeded smoothly for two hours until a problem arose with the landing gear during the approach. Only two out of three green lights indicating locked gear appeared in the cockpit, signaling an issue with the nose landing gear. Assuming it was a faulty bulb, not the gear itself, Captain Bob attempted to fix the light issue by retracting and redeploying the landing gear. Despite their efforts, the nose landing gear light remained unilluminated. They circled over the Everglades, trying to troubleshoot the problem. Captain Bob instructed Don Repo to inspect the landing gear from the hell hole below the cockpit, using a window to visually confirm if it was deployed. Don Repo descended into the hellhole to inspect the landing gear, while Robert Marcus and his friend were exploring the Everglades on an airboat. In the darkness, they noticed a strange orange and yellow flash in the distance and decided to investigate. Meanwhile, aboard Flight 401, Captain Bob inadvertently disengaged the autopilot while instructing Don Repo, causing the plane to gradually descend. However, due to the night and the crew's focus on fixing the landing gear light, they didn't notice the descent or the altitude alarm that sounded briefly. Shortly after Don Repo descended into the hellhole, Flight 401 crashed into the Everglades. None of the passengers or crew, including the cockpit crew, were aware of the emergency until the moment of impact. Robert Markey and his friend, who were exploring the Everglades on an airboat, witnessed the crash and rushed to the scene. They were the first responders and found survivors amidst the wreckage. Despite the violent crash, the soft muddy ground and shallow angle of impact saved many lives. Dozens of passengers survived but were trapped or suffered severe injuries. Robert and his friend rescued survivors, including a man pinned under his seat in the mud, saving them from drowning. As they helped, they heard more cries for assistance from others in the darkness. Robert and his friend, along with the Coast Guard, worked tirelessly to rescue as many survivors as possible, but the situation was overwhelming. Despite their efforts, they couldn't save everyone. Within 30 minutes of their arrival, the Coast Guard helicopters arrived, and together they continued rescue operations throughout the night. By the next morning, all survivors had been rescued, but tragically, 99 people lost their lives. Among the casualties were Captain Bob Loft, co-pilot Bert Stockstill, and flight engineer Don Repo. However, among the survivors were Angelo Donadao, who was in the cockpit, and Jerry Escau, who had ironically praised the flight in a letter to Eastern Airlines. A comprehensive investigation into the crash of Flight 401 concluded that human error, primarily the fixation on a malfunctioning light bulb, was the primary cause. The investigation also confirmed that the nose landing gear was operational. Following the tragedy, Eastern Airlines took significant steps to compensate survivors and the families of the victims. They also implemented extensive changes to pilot training and cockpit procedures to prevent similar disasters in the future. However, the saga of Flight 401 did not end there. For nearly three years after the crash, numerous Eastern Airlines employees encountered a chilling phenomenon. Despite company pressure to keep silent, some employees bravely shared their experiences anonymously with the press and journalists. Here are two unsettling accounts from those employees, with names changed for anonymity. In March 1973, three months after the crash of Flight 401 in the Everglades, an Eastern Airlines flight attendant named Ginny and her close friend Denise were assigned to Flight 318 from New York to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Flight 318 was also an L-1011, like Flight 401, and contained some original parts salvaged from the crashed aircraft, which were deemed safe after thorough testing. Ginny and Denise, along with other attendants, 
served nearly 200 passengers. Denise, having completed her tasks on the main level, headed downstairs to assist Ginny in the kitchen. However, as Denise descended into the elevator, something strange happened. In March 1973, Ginny and Denise, flight attendants on Eastern Airlines Flight No. 318, missed each other while Ginny went up to the main level and Denise went down to the second-level kitchen. Ginny, feeling Denise's presence, searched for her in the cramped kitchen and closed lounge area. Despite suspecting a prank, Ginny found no trace of Denise, causing her to feel increasingly unsettled. As Ginny continued her food prep, she grew increasingly paranoid, constantly checking the closed door to the lounge and scanning her surroundings for signs of Denise. Her anxiety peaked, hoping Denise would jump out and end the suspense. After waiting for a while with no sign of Denise, Ginny mustered the courage to open the door to the lounge. Despite finding it empty, a chilling sensation overwhelmed her. She searched the lounge, but Denise was nowhere to be found. Ginny, consumed by fear, had to return through the lounge to reach the elevator. She cautiously made her way, feeling an eerie presence behind her. Upon reaching the elevator, she encountered Mildred, looking visibly distressed. Mildred, concerned for Ginny's well-being, led her to a secluded area at the back of the plane where Denise was also found shaken. It turned out that while Ginny was on the main level searching for Denise, Denise had gone down to the lower level looking for Ginny. Despite finding no one in the kitchen, Denise felt strongly that Ginny must be there due to an overwhelming sense of not being alone. When Denise checked the lounge and found it empty, she hurried back upstairs. Ironically, they crossed paths again in the elevators without seeing each other. These eerily similar experiences happening independently just minutes apart prompted Ginny and Denise to share their stories, feeling that the coincidences were too significant to ignore. The strange events that occurred on Eastern Airlines flights, particularly those involving sightings of individuals resembling deceased crew members and passengers, continued for nearly two years after the crash of Flight 401. These incidents were reported by multiple flight crew members and passengers, with some occurrences being witnessed by Eastern Airlines executives as well. One notable incident involved the sighting of Captain Bob Loft, who had died in the Flight 401 crash, sitting silently in first class. When crew members attempted to interact with him, he vanished inexplicably. Similar sightings of individuals resembling deceased crew members such as Don Repo, the flight engineer, and other passengers occurred on subsequent flights. Despite the reports from crew members and passengers, Eastern Airlines refused to acknowledge the phenomena officially. However, these occurrences were limited to L-1011 jets that had parts salvaged from Flight 401 installed on them. The sightings persisted until 1974, when Eastern Airlines made a surprising decision to remove all parts from Flight 401 from their L-1011 jets, despite there being no evidence of faults in those parts. After this removal, the sightings abruptly ceased. The exact reason for the cessation of these events remains unknown, and Eastern Airlines never provided an explanation for their decision to remove the parts from Flight 401. However, the removal coincided with the end of the strange occurrences on their flights.